Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk a little bit about MVC, so let's get into it. So we're going to cover what the abbreviation stands for and basically what each part means and try to touch a little bit on where this comes from. So let's get into it. Now first and foremost the MVC stands for Model View Controller and basically what it describes is a structure for web applications. Well, not it doesn't have to be a web application but it's most associated with web applications and enterprise level application development. So basically the M and the V and the C stands for a segment of the application and the idea is that we're trying to express different concerns that go in different layers of the application if you will. So the best way to kind of illustrate this is to just walk through it. So so the M stands for model and basically what it does is it represents the data structure that you will have and basically an entity within your system. Now to give you a concrete example of this like a model is the thing that you will spend you know if you're a professional software developer you're going to most likely going you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about models and structuring models because the models are the, the it's the data structure that holds all of the information within your application the thing that you save to a database and that's where this idea of a model comes in it's the so-called data layer of your application and the model is just and as, as an example, you if you have a web shop, you will very common have models, commonly have models such as a user, a product, an order, things of this this nature, right? And it just stores your data, right? And then you have the view, which is the representation that you will show to the client. Now this doesn't have to be a browser, it just has to be a consumer of your the data that you are sending. And we will try, I will try to make a distinction between the difference between the model and the view. But for now, just remember that the view is, as a rule of thumb, it's the thing that you show to someone who is trying to use your application. It can be a web page, it can be other stuff as well. And then we have the controller, and the controller is the basically the glue between the user of your application the model of your application and the view. In other words, it's the endpoint that your client is going to call in order to execute some logic. Now, the usual flow basically goes like this. So the client, in this case, it's going to be a browser because, hey, we have a, just a standard web application. It's going to call the controller, which is just a URL, or rather the URL maps to a controller method. And when that request comes in, the controller is responsible for talking to the model just very commonly. This is very usually how it goes. In order to grab some data from the database or save data to the database or do something with the data. And then it's very common that you want to show something to the user as part of this request. And so now the controller is responsible for grabbing the data from the database and grabbing the view and then depending on what you want to do with it, simply sending back the response. And this can happen in many forms. You can just have a static view of like some content or you can have a rendered or dynamic view where you use the data from the database and render it into a web page or something like that. It doesn't have to be one, but it's very common that that's the case. So let's walk through the code. Here is my little application, which is basically just the Express server with some fairly a fairly lightweight code and here is the entire application in, in of itself so basically I I'm depending on EGS to do some rendering and I've declared some views we'll look at these in just a moment and here is my models directory now a very common mental mistake that people will make is that they think that MVC means that you have a directory that is called views a directory that is called models and then you have a directory called controllers although this is a popular very low like a, it's a popular structure to like the directory that's not exact like that's not the whole semantics behind it because the like this pattern is more a it's a pattern that you use in order to separate different parts of your application in uh, in very n in nice pieces if you will so basically i have a single controller here and why what makes this a controller is is this these things here so these are action handlers or endpoints if you will which is they are going to take in a request so if I go to my website here 
this page here, I refresh, I am at, you can see here, at the root, like the like root level page of my web application. And that's basically this endpoint here. So when I am going to my browser and I type in localhost 3000, I hit this endpoint. And now I send a so-called static HTML page or a static view. Let's look at that. So my static HTML page is this thing here. This is my view. This is what I'm, this document, this file is what I'm sending to the browser and it's what I'm showing the user. So therefore we can think of it as a view. Now the application has more than that. It has also something called slash render. So let's go to my link render. So this is a rendered view. Okay, so this is another view. Okay, let's see what happens here. So now I'm rendering this message, like this file here, render.egs, and I'm passing in a message object with some content. So let's look at render egs here. So basically what I'm doing here is that I am taking an HTML document and I am rendering in, oh, sorry about that. I'm rendering in this message here. So this is what we call a dynamic view. It's some or a dynamic tem template, if you will. It is something that where I'm basically, well, in this case, I, I'm not grabbing data from the database. I'm just hard coding it like this, but I could grab this information from a database. But that's this is where the idea of rendering comes in. So this is just a dynamic view, if you will, where I use some data on my server, put it in my view, and then I send my view to my consumer. And then we have JSON, like this endpoint called JSON, where if I click this, I'm just going to get a JSON message. Now, it's very uncommon for people to think about this as a view, but technically it still is a view. I am still sending a, a representation of something to my consumer. It's something that I'm showing, if you will, to my user. We can we can discuss the semantics, but generally, I, and that is probably the most common way of thinking about it, generally people think of the view layer as, you know, something that the user interacts with on a web page or a web page in of itself, but it doesn't actually have to be. The semantics are a little bit looser than that, but for most common cases that's what the view is. So let's talk a little bit about models and a model view. You see I have this thing here that I'm not actually using, but I'll touch on this as well. So a model view, if you will, is a representation of well, basically a, a model, if you will, it, because the thing about a model is that it's very rare, actually, well, it depends, of course, but for larger applications, you, the model doesn't necessarily contain everything that you want to have on a web page. It might actually contain even more, or it may contain less, depending on your use case. Now, in my very simple little model that we're going to look at here, which is basically this little simple model here, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on. But there are situations where a model, like especially, especially if you're using an SBA framework of some sort, let's say that you want to show a bunch of information to a user on a web page. Now you can do go about this in many ways. You can use REST practices and so forth, but a, also a very common way of doing this is that you actually have an endpoint that returns a JSON model or a view, if you will, which contains a composition of a lot of data sources. I mean, it, it, you may not have a single model that holds, I mean, if let's say that you're going to show the product page on a product page on a on a web store, you're not going to have one single supermodel that holds all of the information that's going to go on that page. So what you're going to do is that you're going to use multiple models and pull out data from the database and then you will most likely put it in some type of JSON format or a JSON view if this is an SBA page, if, you, if, if it is an SBA, and send that to the client using your JSON model, if you will. So this is a you can think of this view model as a subset, as you can see here. I'm just using the foo and the created at here, but I'm not sending with, sending the bar. So it's not a just a pure model. It's not my model that I hold have in my database. It is just a view representation of the thing I want to show to the user. So just keep that with you because it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit important later on. So. This is my model. So the model is basically just the structure, the data structure, if you will, that I want to have in my database. Now, this is a very 
like a toys example here, but the model basically just stores all the data that I that I want to keep and want to have in order to represent a specific entity within my system. And these nouns that describe things like user, product, order, etc., etc., they very naturally grow on you when you know object-oriented practices. And the model is one of the most, most fundamental parts of like professional-grade software development. It's a very it's a very common um, topic and a very common concept. So why am I using this thing, you might ask? Why, I, why did I go through the hassle of creating a view that represents my model? Well, to be, to be honest, the reason for this is because the model may not be something I want to send as a single entity to the client. Imagine if I have a user model. Now, in my user model, on my, in my database, I'm most likely going to store information that I don't want to send to my client when they are requesting it. So if, for example, if somebody has a bunch of followers and I need to get those followers and, sh followers and show that to the user who has all these followers, well, think about that. If the, each user has like private information like emails and passwords and stuff like that, it's not a really good idea for me to send that data with my response when the use, you know, when some other user is asking for this information, right? So that's why I go through the the process of creating a view layer, a view that represents a follower, or I would have a follower view, if you will, that is just a subset or a composition of another model. So that that's a good general th way of thinking about this. So finally. As I said, the the entire MVC pattern just boils down to this fundamental concept. The controller, which is the thing we're seeing here, is just going to return and get a request from the client, and it's going to perform some logic. It might go to a model and grab some data or store some data or something of that nature. It may not it may not even be included in that specific request, but it could do that. And then it may or may not return some type of view. At the very least, you're going to return like a response saying that you executed the operation. So hopefully this sheds some light on the MVC pattern. So the thing that I want you to take away from this is that the MVC pattern is just a way to structure an application. And the structure is very simple. The client goes to a controller. It can be one controller like this because this is a small application or if you can have multiple controllers that represents different entities like you can have a user controller, a product controller, you name it, you can pick and choose as you want. And once the controller has been contacted, it's going to execute some business logic or something like that, which usually means it's going to save something or update something, remove something or get something from the model layer, which is just the database, like the stuff that is actually stored in the database. And finally, it's usually going to return some type of view to the client. And that's basically the entire flow. I hope this was useful to you. Have a great day.